Cystic fibrosis can be a devastating diagnosis, but living with the disease can bring positivity and a new appreciation for each day. From the Bonnell Foundation in Detroit, Michigan, it's the Living with Cystic Fibrosis podcast. Nothing on the Bonnell Foundation Living with Cystic Fibrosis podcast should be considered medical advice. Medical advice can only come from your CF physician. Here's your host, Laura Bonnell. Dr. Ahmet Euler, and you are from... So it is, um, the center is the combined Boston Children's Hospital and Brigham and Women's Hospital CF Center. And so I'm the adult program director of the combined program. Our clinic just happens to be situated in children's, but our, our, our subspecialists and hospital admissions all take place at the Brigham. It's Boston Children's Hospital and Brigham and Women's Hospital in, uh, in Boston. And I'm so glad that I got to meet you the, for the first time at the um, patient, the externally led patient advocacy thing when we were trying to let the FDA know how important it is to fast track drugs. And I met you there and right away I knew how awesome you were. I liked the way that you spoke about patients and and the way you treat the disease. So it's wonderful to see you again at this conference. And I just wonder how you're feeling as a doctor who's been in this for so long, and now we have the Trikafta that's come out that can help 90% of the population. Yeah, so Laura, thank you. Um, It was so nice meeting you there as well. And what a great event that was, because it was probably that that led the FDA to, you know, approve the drug so quickly. I mean, all of us were caught off guard on October 21st. Uh, You know, we were expecting, you know, maybe end of November, probably closer to March. So it was a wonderful, um, but pretty intense surprise, uh, you know, when we heard the news. And just, you know, besides ourselves, happy. I just had spent actually a week in the UK visiting centers in Scotland and in England. And where they are still, or they were at the time, still trying to get Simkevi, as they call it, uh, you know, approved by the their, their regulatory agency, uh, or actually um, uh, by by the, um, the Was UK. It EM- uh, but no, it's a no. They had um, approved. It's just that they paid for by the NS. What is that? Uh, That's okay. Their healthcare, their healthcare but service over there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so it actually was approved a week after I left. So I take credit for it. No, I'm <laughs> Absolutely. Just but um, but you know they are still trying to fight for these modest modulators. When now with the news of Trikafta, you know the highly effective or highly beneficial you know modulator therapies now that are available, I feel for them that. That, you know, they really need to, you know, begin that fight to get the triple combination. I'm just so glad, you know, as we were just looking forward to it um, when during all my talks, that I get to come home and then now we get to tell all our patients this great news. And they are besides excited. And parents like myself, oh, too. I yes. mean, you know, I'm waiting, like Emily, my daughter Emily says, I can't wait until I have that pill in my hand. Like, I won't believe it until it's in my hand. So... It must be like whatever holiday is your favorite holiday. It must be like that when you get to say, here's your prescription. I think that if you were at the plenary session where Jane Davies spoke and Francis Collin, I mean, he, you know, spoke about that young lady who wrote the message. I mean, it was in his editorial um, in the New England Journal of Medicine. It's those moments that patients and families remember. And so this will be forever etched in the memory October 21st, but probably the day you actually get to hold that drug. That's going to be more important. I think we have people like celebrating with like big, like, huge cakes and like having parties, you know, signs are on the walls uh, or on the doors of our you know, patients' rooms who are hospitalized. Um, this is, you know, a momentous day. And I think you feel that energy and how transformational this, you know, this time is in CF because 90% of the patients means like, I mean, that is something. I mean, before having these pockets of patients get highly effective therapies was one thing, but now 90% of patients, you know, something as effective. And, you know, we've already been witness to it through the clinical trials and the early ex- expanded access program. We are seeing the changes, you know, within days and weeks with patients. First of all, just to um, make sure that people don't expect to have any improvement within days. Some people we didn't see for like two, three months. So, you know, everyone has a little bit of a different response. Uh, so just by and large, it is just amazing. And that is what I was going to ask you. So what happens and is it different for everyone when they begin Trikafta? I mean, will it impact enzymes and their gastrointestinal issues? 
Yeah. So I think it is definitely an individualized thing. So we can't predict. But overall, one, just according to the data, you know, everyone like by the median was about 14 percent improvement for those who are naive to getting a modulator, um, 10 percent for those who are already on one. You know, BMI uh, improvement in uh, the outcome measures of weight improvement in just how you feel, your sinus symptoms, and then exacerbation rates, which I feel like that's a real critical critical one, because every time you have an, an exacerbation, that actually signifies damage that might be occurring in your lung at that time, even if you're on a modulator. So if we reduce those events, all the better. Um, but people will feel positive and negative things probably at first. The sinus symptoms are something that patients feel right away, like a lot of increased secretions. But Different than when they started Simdico and Orcambi, the congestion seems to be also like associated with relief. Like the secretions are thin enough that they're not just bogged down with nasal congestion. They're feeling like, hey, it's running, but it feels good. Like, or I'm bringing up a lot of sputum, but it feels like I'm clearing. So I don't feel poorly even, you know, when they're starting it over the first few days. GI symptoms, I think, you know, essentially this is changing like the chemistry everywhere. So like your, you know, the airway is less acidic, you know, the GI bowels are less acidic. We're seeing people have a little bit more gas, maybe, you know, potentially, uh, you know, just some other symptoms, like they could actually have constipation or diarrhea, like, you know, they could have a mix of it. So we're, we try to just give people um, an idea of what to expect or what, you know, you know, we don't know what they might expect, but just give them all the information. But hopefully then that gets better. And then there's a normalcy as your body essentially is adjusting to this new, to this new world, like this new chemistry. And every time a drug gets approved, like from Kaleidico to Syndico and Orcambi, do you just see the family hope get more and more? Or how do you feel each time things get better and better and improve for more and more people? I think that that you could feel the energy over the last two years. I mean, there's this high anticipation, expectation. Um, everyone has been about as aggressive as inherent as they have, you know, this is with especially the light at the end of the tunnel, you know, people have been really working towards just maintaining their health. And I've been seeing people sort of, you know, that energy, um, you know, building, of course, others who are getting sick, who are very anxious and stressed out, so stressed out that even when they receive the drug, you know, there's still this anxiety um, that has remained and, you know, sometimes impacts them, you know, going forward. Um, but yeah, the energy has been great. The, like, I think there's a, there's a little bit more stress, like, you know, that was palpable in the last year or so. But now there's a sense of relief. And even families who are contacting us, I mean, they're, they recognize there's just going to be so much paperwork and there's some going to be some delays. But they're almost like this calm has come down and, you know, everyone, even though they want it like tomorrow or yesterday, they're still being patient and understand that, you know, they're going to get this dug in hopefully a couple of weeks. Right. Yeah, there yeah. was, it was like this celebration. Yeah. I heard it. I was with my peers at another conference, you know, CF moms and people. And then there was this, oh my gosh, is the insurance going to cover it? Is you know, your state healthcare going to cover it. And then once that was all addressed and doctors in Michigan were saying, Hey, we're giving out prescriptions. Yeah. Everyone's like, Oh my gosh. So, you know, get your appointment and hurry up. So, I mean, there's right. no hurry. Everybody's going to get it, but no, but there, I mean, and maybe I'm, you know, sensing some patient because I still think that people are pretty anxious until they do yes. get it in their hands. Oh, absolutely. But what is really yes. incredible. And today, you know, hearing from the CF foundation, I mean, there are obviously plans, you know, Medicare, Medicaid plans that, you know, um, already have it. But then there's others where there might be a delay, like United Healthcare. We found out today that there is a mandatory six month sort of review period. And I know the CF Foundation is going to do everything that they can to make sure that that you know, review period is, is shortened dramatically. I mean, United Healthcare is one of the biggest healthcare you know, groups in the country. So, um, so I think that there will be lots of you know advocacy and people like you, and I mean, like you're spreading the word. But you, you're you're part of such a strong group of parents and families of people with CF. Um, so your voice, I think, is being heard, and and everyone wants to do right by you. 
Thank you. And well, your daughter. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things we did find initially was um, I called my private insurance. They hadn't heard of it. They're waiting for the formulary. You had I had to go up to somebody in the pharmacy, hire up to someone and say, I need this process started. And it's they're waiting for the doctors to get the um, prescription. So yeah. that happened. And then we're waiting for pre-authorization. And so you're so we are doing a lot of work. So yeah. the pre-authorization, we're still going back and forth with the hospital and getting that done before her appointment. And then in Michigan, there is children's special health care and Medicaid. Yeah. So our clinic doctor called them. A lot of us at the foundations called all of them and said, you have to have a plan. Parents are stressed. Parents are freaking out legitimately. Just tell us what you know. And what they did decide in Michigan was that they were not going to withhold the medication, even though they didn't have it, uh, you know, the formulary done. So they are going to, on a case by case basis, give the medication as they're figuring it out. That's it's great. it's been a lot of work from the doctor to the parents to the foundations to get it all going. You know, it just maybe you know we don't want to give people like work to do. We want to take that on ourselves, write out the prior authorizations and letters of medical necessity. But I have. The, the, you know, the patients who have gotten it, the people with CF and parents have been proactive calling the insurance companies and being like, what do I need to do to expedite this? And I think that usually the companies, especially the people on the phone maybe, are willing to try to help them step by step. And we have people who have already started the drug last week when we didn't realize the drug would even be in the, you know, the specialty pharmacies, you know, um, you know, the place where they're even dispensing it. So I would say call your insurance company, call your, you know, pharmacy and work with them on that end and even give us feedback as we're so overwhelmed. You know, sometimes those faxes come and they go to some other fax machine or they don't go through. And so, you know, there may be delays that happen because of that. So reach out to your providers and just remind them, be like, hey, I haven't heard back. Um, there's obviously processes that all your, you know, and you have to listen to your center because, by the way, they're also overwhelmed. Um, exactly. And that's yeah. what I was going to say about pre-authorization. Yeah. Necessary in some cases, but it's like cystic fibrosis, your diagnosis never changes. So maybe pre-authorization once in your lifetime so, so no. that you don't have to call the they clinic. Want to do it multiple times. Multiple times yeah. every year randomly with yeah. no, you know, they won't tell you ahead of time. So then it puts a lot of pressure on the clinic. The nurses who are so busy in the clinic and, you know, parents like myself are hounding them like, I need you to call back the insurance company. They, they won't do anything. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a lot of pressure no, on everyone. We have hired two people to just do this. And they're overwhelmed and we had to, you know, get more people sort of on the side, maybe working at night to help. We created, uh, you know, kind of like an assembly line type of approach mm -hmm. where everyone had a certain job to like then build a case for each patient. Um, but it is overwhelming and most centers aren't, you know, they don't have the resources to hire people just to do prior authorizations. Right. So it is. So I think being patient with your center is going to be important because they're doing their best because they're. I mean, you know, we're all here at the CF conference, so right. not wonderful timing. So we're not right. back home, like working on these things, but they want to get it in the hands of people with CF. Like that's what they want. So you know that they're doing their best to make that happen. Absolutely. And I think it's interesting too, as I have adult children who, um, tra you know, transferred or went to the CF clinic and obviously we empowered them to do their own, take charge of their own health insurance, but it is a learning and it's hours of time. So as they're working with the centers too and growing and learning what they have to do as this new drug comes out, it's also interesting. This is a great learning. This is like where they're this going through it. insurance 101 and growing <laughs> right. up like, you know, but, and for us too, I mean, the, the laws are always changing, the, the criteria are changing, or there's some other roadblock that someone's putting in front of you. So it's, you just have to, you know, keep, you know, pounding at it and learning as you go. And where do you go from here? How many patients do you have that you're going to be putting on Trikafta? Do you have a guesstimation? So we have about 390 that are eligible right now. And that's, you know, over 12 and up because yeah. I'm talking about our combined uh, you know, program, both pediatric and adults. So that's, you know, that's a large number of patients. Um, and, uh, you know, but as we're, you know, 
just spreading this incredible news. And I think even people who are not eligible are excited about this, but they're also, you know, have mixed feelings because they're part of the 10% and they don't have, you know, a drug right now that's going to be available. So where we go from here is really focusing on, you know, leaving no one behind and making sure that right now we're working uh, with a company called Elox and working on the nonsense mutation patients and trying to make sure that there are clinical trials that are hopefully about to start uh, phase two to study, you know, these drugs in those patients. Now, you know, we're hoping, you know, for the best and the data looks good, you know, um, in vitro, but this is going to be the first time that, you know, these are going to be given to patients. So where we go from here is really trying to optimize the drug getting in the hands of our patients, making sure that they're safe using it. Also, this is the largest number of patients that are starting this drug and looking out for, you know, some of the things you mentioned. Are people having GI symptoms? Are they, you know, what's going on? We want to look for maybe things that we haven't noticed in the clinical trials. I mean, the clinical trials looked really clean as far as side effects, but certainly, you know, we'll, we'll probably see some things and, and we'll have to be, you know, uh, vigilant monitoring that. And then, you know, just trying to be vigilant, making sure that people intelligently in an educated way and working with their team members, you know, potentially that are going to want to stop things. Um, you know, all of our patients, like they make decisions um, just like we all do on our own, but based on, you know, hopefully, um, you know, the conversations and experience they have in clinic, but we want to make sure that people are just doing that safely. And then there's going to be a study called Simplify where we're going to look at that in a, you know, randomized controlled way, which is going to be, you know, hopefully, um, you know, give us, how to safely have people, you know, take that really burdensome treatment regimen and make it more manageable with now everyone is, has this expectation. You saw Jane Davies talk about her uh, patient, Anna, who's had a modulator and, you know, she's running a marathon and, you know, the people are going to be starting to feel better and, and feeling like there are no obstacles. I can do anything and people are going to be busier, families, you know, pregnancies, things like this. You know, we're going to be needing to be vigilant, recognizing, you know, how we're going to manage people differently who are going to be doing things that are maybe a little bit more risky, that patients are going to be older. We're going to make sure we're dealing older. with hypertension Isn't that great? And, and how to like set up a, you know, savings account and like, you know, save for retirement and all these other things that, you know, people perhaps we've been talking about that you should do that anyway, because our hope was that this is this day is going to come. Um, but now more so, I think people are going to really believe that they have a, their whole lives ahead of them. No obstacles. And some of the things that were that I just saw at a session today um, at the NACFC was about um, possibly not for everyone. You might be able to get off enzymes that more babies are going to be born because the fertility is better. Is that true? Is I hearing it correctly? Yeah. So first of all, I mean, I think that people are going to be planning families more so for sure. So I think that there's going to be, you know, more, more births. Um, and, uh, and then that's a whole other, you know, actually, um, things that we're working on is how to make sure people are going to be safe. But yeah, um, we are already seeing that there was a study that was done um, that showed, uh, you know, this marker of malabsorption called fecal elastase. That's what we measure in the stool. Um, that was going from, you know, abnormal to normal or borderline normal ranges. So we know that we can recover some pancreatic function. And the earlier you start, the more likely you'll be able to make that recovery. Unfortunately, I think that with our adults and to manage expectations is that where there is damage, there is going to be maybe some improvement and some, uh, you know, change uh, that we might see. But overall, you know, we have to work on just making sure that there isn't worsening damage. We're going to still have to take care of people with lung disease for a while. Right. Um, this and, isn't a cure, yeah. but it right. is absolutely wonderful. Yeah. And going back to what you said about the 10%, I can relate as far as Kaleidico came out. It wouldn't help my kids, but that was such a small 4% of the population, but wonderful. Yeah. And then um, Orcambi, Samdico. So I know you're holding your breath. You're like, okay, come on, get it in phase yeah. three for my child, you yeah. know, please, please, please. And so I completely empathize with those families who are just like, come on, okay, I'm excited, but I need it for my child. I know. It's so such that's a... How, that's how they feel, right. right? I mean, I can't imagine one, you know, it's that you can't 
it's so hard not to be connected with people and their families, you know, as we meet them. And so we feel that angst and, 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 you know, so we share that with you, but this is, you know, I'm just so happy for you guys. It's just, you know, know. and I know I can't imagine, I wish I was there to see your daughter, you know, get that medicine and, you know, and I'll send you a picture when both of them get it. Yeah. Oh, that's right. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Emily will get it. Um, this is November, so she'll have it in November, and Molly gets it in uh, January. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. That's such great news. So, yeah. But so that's the focus, though, is to really just make sure, one, this is great for you know Emily and Molly, but our plan is to actually have better drugs for them. Um, you know, there's this drug is treating F5-OIDL, but they have another mutation that isn't F5-OIDL, and, you know, a therapy that might enhance its activity. How do we treat infections better? How do we treat inflammation better? So our hope is to improve her quality of life, everybody with CF, their quality of life. So those are the things we're going to continue focusing on. I mean, it's it's a great day, but it just seems like, you know, we're we're still going to be working hard to, you know, complete the, the journey. Yeah. And I wonder um, how you feel like when you go home to your family and you're our superhero, like all the doctors are like, I just, I mean, changing lives and everything, you know? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I haven't cried yet since yeah. they made the announcement. So it was coming. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I think that our families uh, recognize, you know, just, you know, first of all, they, my, my wife has met many of our patients mm-hmm. and, um, and I think that she understands very well, you know, what I do and, you know, how emotional and how, you know, you know, just all encompassing the job is. Um, but what's really amazing here is when you come to the ECF conferences, I mean, all these people are amazing. It's amazing. Each, every time I go to a, a talk and I hear someone say something or I see the the empathy and the like the really great questions, this organization, whether it's, you know, through CFF or right. other organizations like CFRI. CFRI, like, Series, Awesome, Boomer, I mean, Gunner, Lee, all these Brian. Yeah. I mean, who I forgot. Emily, Rock CF. I mean, it's amazing. So they're like, like yeah. Brian our and family, Emily are, you know? They, you know, they're ridiculous, like to build what they're building and right. having to handle having CF and right. all the complications. But, and, and Siri is just a, a machine. She like, is a machine. I don't know. She's how badass. She's to keep, yeah, totally. Right? Yeah, she's totally <laughs> like, fantastic. But she keeps that schedule and keeps going because her I mean, daughter, you, Tess. You are, yep. and she are, you know, you guys are driven by you know, this incredible love and, you know, the person who gives you strength and you want to do everything you can for them. So, and then, you know, the CFF also just like the, the the heart and soul of the CF community is just really, really apparent when you come to a conference like this. It is. And it's great to get to see you and Dr. Nasser and all the doctors, you know, that we don't always see because you're all, you're all over the country and yeah. the social workers and the nurses and the other foundations and the parents and who did I forget? I don't know, but it's I fabulous. Know, but, like, I don't know if you noticed, but like we can't walk down the hallway without hugging, without like saying hi. And, and, you know, and it's like right. uh, Dr. Nasser is like, you know, it's like seeing an old friend, you know, it's right. uh and, and so we're all friends and we're all colleagues and, and yeah, no, that's pretty special. And you're seeing that and feeling that as well, because I see you down the hallway, and like we're obviously <laughs> going to give you a big hug. Right. So it's uh, it's it's yeah, it's pretty pretty special. It's hard to ever want to stop doing this. Live for the conferences, it. so you we can see everybody together. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah. Well, is there anything else that you would want to you know you want to talk about to kind of wrap it up where we are now and where you're going with your patients, your hospital, or where maybe the drugs are going in the, all over the country. I think that, you know, one, um, I'm just thrilled about, you know, it's interesting, you know, this drug is approved and we're getting it to the sickest patients and previously through expanded access, but we really want to work on the studies to get it to those little kids, the kids under six, kids under two, you know, when they're born, because our hope is that they never know what having CF feels like. And so, 
and on that note, obviously, we want to make sure that everyone who, you know, all our adults really have the minimal symptoms. I mean, and we're seeing that, by the way, like people are coming to me who had lung function, you know, 30% or even less, and they're not coughing anymore. I mean, that is ridiculous. It's I don't think that right. I anticipated that as an outcome. I mean, I was assuming much improved symptoms, but hey, I'm not coughing. And now that's not going to be everybody. But, you know, one, still our work is not done. Two, managing expectations. Not everybody might have the same response. So, and I don't want people to, you know, feel disappointed when their lung function maybe doesn't improve as much because other things are happening in their body that, you know, that will be keeping them from being in the hospital more. So everyone is, you know, going to be benefiting in some way it, it looks like. Um, and for those who don't have a drug or not benefiting as much as they would have hoped, these other therapies, when you, you know, and hopefully people in your audience have watched the plenary sessions live, I mean, the amount of resources that are being put into, you know, RNA, DNA editing, right. um, you know, just uh, working at all levels, stem cell, there is a lot of work that's going in still. They have not stopped pushing forward. Right. It so, seems like it's at a level I've never felt yeah, right now, the pace yeah. and everything. I mean, right now we're looking at a time where we're looking at maybe curing things like sickle cell and thalassemia. So these are other genetic diseases um, that are, you know, because they're bloodstream uh, disorders, some of them that they're a little bit easier to treat with um, certain approaches. Um, so we want to be, you know, in that category. And, um, and I think that none of us are going to rest until the, the treatment is, gets better and complete and perfect. And so I don't think you'll see people rest until that happens. Right. That's a great and, way. Yeah. yeah. What were you And say? I was going to say, it's like, and it's all because we sit in those clinic rooms and, you know, I wish that they weren't so, you know, clinical, <laughs> um, but that, um, you know, we want it. We're, we're in that room. We want to like help. And, you know, we're so we're so committed. It's fantastic. Yeah. And we're so great to have you and all these doctors. Yeah. And I think the best way to end and is. I'll just say, yeah. just because you said doctors. Yeah. I mean, it's our whole team, right? It's right. like our nurse practitioners, our physical therapists, our dietitians. It is this team approach that we uh, that we espouse in taking care of people with CF. That's the reason why we're here. There's almost like no, you know, just like one person that's making right. this happen. It's the whole team. It is yeah. absolutely the whole team. And everyone's wonderful and works together. And you yeah. get, you know, what you need from each person. But like you were saying just a moment ago, being born today with CF, oh my gosh, such a better time. Even than 24 years ago when uh, Molly was born. Yeah. So, yeah, it's fantastic. Right. Right. Well, I'm so glad. It's so nice to be able to sit here and talk yeah, to you. Yeah, it is. You too. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Dr. Ahmet Euler, thank you so much for taking time to fill us in a little bit and give us much more hope too. Thank you. This has been the Living with Cystic Fibrosis podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the show in your favorite podcast app so you don't miss an episode. For more information and to learn more about the Bonnell Foundation, check us out online at thebonnellfoundation.org. That's the B-O-N-N-E-L-L foundation.org or follow us on social at the Bonnell Foundation.